Hi, this is the video for 9E and 9F physics. It's the 13th of May, 2020. So if you're seeing this video because you missed the online, well, we're going to be talking about eye problems and how to fix them today. We talked about eye physics last time. That's what we'll continue with today. If you're joining me, let me know who you are, and I will sign you in. Tony's here already. Good morning, Tony. And so is Leah. Great. Oh my gosh, everybody's here. I'm trying to catch up here, folks. Okay, Emily and Lucy are here. Good. Emily's here. Lucy's here. Oh, you guys are quick. Okay. I got Muriel and Marla. I've got Kira and Nicholas. I've got Shilpa and Micah. I've got Felina and Santiago. I've got um, Christian and Larissa. I've got Dominic. I've got a mirror. Maybe we'll get everybody to you. That'd be very cool. And I got Lee and Noah. I've got Malin. Um, as we're gathering up, I'll just tell you we're going to review the eye a little bit and then talk about eye problems today and how to solve them. Uh, we may get to various eye conditions that you or relatives of yours may have. So we'll see that and we'll take your questions about the eyes uh, as well. Lena and Sarah are here. Great. Yeah, so um, last time we talked about the eye, and I brought the big giant eye with me. Magdalena's here. When the light first goes into your eye, what's the first thing the light goes through? What's the first thing as we warm up here, okay? The first thing the light goes through is called the what? What part of your eye? Nicholas is on the spot. See if some others are typing and clicking as well. And Felina and others have it as well. Good. Yeah, the cornea. Right. We're going to learn something that happens today to your cornea over time. Um, good. Okay, then it goes through, of course, the pupil, which is just nothing. And then it hits the lens. Where does the image land? On what part of the eye does the image land? So check your notes from last week. And in the meantime, I got a couple others who joined me. So if you haven't said hello, do say hello. And several of you got that already. You're quick. Retina, Lee has it, Shilpa, Nicholas, Sarah. Retina is right. We'll learn what can happen with your retina today as well. Happened with my brother. Okay, great, good. Thanks for participating. Glad you're all there. That is super. Ah, let's go ahead and begin. And I need this right over here. Good. And I see Ben is here. Good.
Anybody else snuck in that I didn't see? It should be 23 of you, and I've got a lot of you, especially from 9F. Philip's here. Good morning, Philip. Julian is here. Super. Thank you, Julian K, for checking in, for joining us. And I got Lucy and I got Malek. Hello to both of you. Dynamite. Okay. Okay. Um, we talked last time, right at the end of the hour, about what's different than your in your eye than is different with a real lens. And your your eye lens is not made of glass, of course. It's made of a substance that can change its shape. So, so I'm going to write here as a little topic for this part is how and why our lens changes shape. I think we did this last time. Did I have you guys look far away and then look at your hand? Because if you look far away and look at your hand, you're going to notice that something's changing in your eye. You can kind of feel it. And it takes like a millisecond until it's like becomes, you know, focused at the right spot. Noah Delves is here. Thanks, Noah. Yes, we did do this last week. Good. Okay. That's what we're going to draw a picture of right now because I don't think we got that far. So here we go. Let's say we've got our. Yeah, exactly, Santiago, because you're trying to focus. So let's see what your eye does. Okay, if we got distance vision, so let's say we got like something really far away. Let's say we're looking at a tree. I know it's supposed to be a tree. Okay, you're looking really far away. Okay, so here you are. Um, and that's coming from really far. So essentially the rays coming at you are pretty much parallel. You know what I mean? So then what they do is they hit your eye and your eye lens has got to be pretty stretched out. And essentially these guys then go through and you could guess it's going to focus on your retina. I know, I know this review. I know, I know. So so that guy goes straight, and these guys go here, and that's my image. That's on the retina. Okay, so this is far away. But let's say instead, when I got a question. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't the eye also adjust to the amount of light? Yeah, oh, Ben, the eye adjusts to the amount of light by opening and closing the pupil, the size of the pupil. If it's really dark, it's really open. And if it's really bright out, it makes it really small. You probably noticed that as well. Uh, Natalie is here. Hello, Natalie. Good. Thanks for checking in, folks, as soon as you arrive. Appreciate that. Good. Anybody else, please check in as well. Okay, so that's far away. Now let's say you're looking at your hand, okay? So here's your hand. And three, for those of us that can't do artwork, okay? Now what happens is to make, when, when my hand is this close, uh, my, my lens has to adjust and it gets thicker. So it actually squishes or is squished and it gets thicker like this. Uh, yeah, I can try and do it the same size as your case. So there's that. Let's see, it looks like this. So, 
So the lens is squished by muscles, okay? For objects that are close, like our hand, okay? And that way, the the rays here can bend in and land together at the right spot on the retina. Okay. And I got some comments here. Okay, so let me read your comments and questions, okay? I'm gonna lean back and see if you can see that. Hope it's not too glary today. And Leah, I don't know if that's true. Honestly, I've never heard that. I'd have to Google it and see. Good. Emily says, isn't your eye then like a camera lens? Yes and no. Here's the difference, Emily. A camera lens cannot do this. It cannot get squished by the little muscles and it can't change size. So with a camera lens, where the retina is, that's where the film is, that's moved back and forth like this in the camera. The lens stays at the same spot and where the image lands moves back and forth. So we're little like that, but instead of us, moving our retina, which we can't, we squish the lens and that happens as well. Uh, and, and then I get the image still landing at the right spot, no matter if it's far away or close. It's squished by the iris. Uh, Nicholas, I think so, although I got in this book in front of me, the muscle that squishes it, I think it's part of the iris, it's called the ciliary muscle, Nicholas. So. Ciliary, if that's something that's kind of fun for you to know. Ciliary muscle, okay? Yeah, good. Anyone else, if you're just joining us, say hello. Hello. Um, other than that, that's how your eye normally works. And again, I should be able to just do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I should be able to almost feel it changing. In fact, if I'm looking far away at a tree and I put my hand here, my hand is out of focus. Or if I'm looking at a, my hand and I glance at the tree, the tree is out of focus. So I can't get them both at once. Now, because you guys are younger, your muscle is doing this a lot quicker than mine. So I notice more of a pause between here and here or here and here. I notice more of a pause than you do. Okay? Just so we know what's going on. Good. Let's talk about some eye problems and how to solve them. And I got, exactly, uh, Santiago. And I think the part of the iris that does this is called the ciliary muscle. Uh, that's, I'm not up on my biology, but that's what I got in the book that I found here to, to share with you. Okay, yes, yes. I hope we're pretty good there. And now let's talk about eye problems, okay? Things that can go wrong. So I'm gonna change boards, all right? Because you guys are so important, I've got two whiteboards. Isn't that great? Okay. Um, the most common problem is that we can't see very well, all right? And how many of you wear like eyeglasses? Raise your, oh, never mind. Okay, well, I bet a lot of you wear eyeglasses or contact lenses, okay? I know I did for years, right? Yeah, and Santiago will come back to some of those other ideas in a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's talk about um, regular eye problems. Okay, essentially there's two. All right, here we go. I got an overhead to show you. And it's probably drawn better than I can draw. So we're going to do this, okay? 
All right, so I'm going to hold that a little closer so you can see. Ready? Essentially, we got two problems. The two problems, and one of some of you might have one, some might have the other. And the one is called nearsighted. And what it means is the, I can see objects that are <clears throat> that are near, but I can't see objects that are far away. When I was younger, I was terribly nearsighted. I had really big, thick glasses. Well, let's see what my problem was. So here's the object from far away. The rays come in, and instead of landing on the retina, see that? They don't. They land too near the front. Ah, let me point that out. So the image is landing here instead of where it should on the retina. So if it's too near the front, I was nearsighted. That's where it gets the, the language, okay? On the other hand, if I can see things far away, but I can't see things like my hand, it's fuzzy, then the rays from like my hand would go through, and they don't land on the retina. They land too far behind the retina. So it's far sighted. So that's where the words come from. <clears throat> Emily, exactly. Kurzsichtig and weitsichtig. Exactly. That's exactly the same thing. Kurzsichtig, nearsighted, weitsichtig is far sighted. Good. And I see Julian L is here. Let me write him down. Anyone else who's here and you haven't told me? Hey, Maurice is here. Good. Welcome, Maurice. You know what? I'm going to read off folks that are missing, okay? So if you're here, let me know. Other than that, 9F, whoa, has just about everybody. I'm missing Jason and Benedict and Alyssa. And for 9E, doing pretty good too. I'm missing Devante, Priya, Aiden K, Deacon, Riley, Tom, Cosima, Ali, and Vincent. So if any of those are here, let me know, write me a message. Okay, so <clears throat> once again, there's the problem. There's the problem. Ali's here. Thanks, Tom. What could we do? Look at this top one. What kind of lens could we use here? We got to put a lens in front of this, like glasses, and we need the rays to do what? To kind of get spread out more. They're meeting too early. They're meeting too near the, the, the lens. So how can I make the rays spread out more? What sort of lens did we learn spreads out rays? What kind of lens am I going to have to put in front of this eye to solve the problem? Gotcha. Thank you, Kira. And hi, Priya. Diverging. Well, I got two, two different answers. I got some di divergent and convergent. Okay. If I had, okay, <laughs> the vast majority are diverging. Good. Right. Yeah. And I think it's going to be, thanks, Marilyn, too. Okay. Yeah, I think it is diverging. Let's see why. I want the light to diverge. So I want it to land out here in one spot and not converge too much. All right, what about this puppy down here? <clears throat> here it's diverging too much, so I want to put a mm -hmm lens in front here. So for the second one, if you're <clears throat> weitsichtig or farsighted, what sort of lens is going to go there? You can probably guess, of course, exactly, Lee, Dominic. And Priya, hey, there you are, Priya, good. Uh, and Shopa, it's a converging lens. Okay, let's have a look at that. So I took a piece of paper, and I put it on there. I'm going to pull that off now, I hope. Again. There we go. Okay, so again, let's have a look. 
So you can just kind of sketch this if you want and put in front of your eye for a for a nearsighted eye, okay? It is indeed. I know your eyeglasses don't look like this. I'll draw on the board how they really look in a second. But that would be like the type of eyeglass if you're nearsighted. And I think the majority of people are nearsighted. And thank you, Leah. Let me know if Alyssa joins us there. And then if you're farsighted, that's the shape of your glasses too, okay? So it depends which you are. If your parents have reading glasses, okay? Then they need something, well, I think, let's see, reading glasses, which means you're far-sighted. So that reading glasses would be something like this, okay? So this would be reading glasses. This is if you're really nearsighted, you've got glasses like that. That's fine. Thank you, then. Hello to, to uh, Alyssa. I understand you're here and you can't type stuff on what you've got. So that's okay. Thank you for joining us, Alyssa. All right, good. Um, I'm gonna put this up here. And I've gotta draw a couple things. Okay, for starters, make that a little more even. For starters, for the nearsighted lens, all right? Your lens doesn't look like that. Your lens looks more like this. Yeah, that's not the best, but you get the idea. Okay, see how the lens is thicker here and here? Well, that's the way it is on actual glasses, but they tend to look a lot more stylized. Really, that's not very good. I wanna really show you it's curved, but then it's like thicker here and thinner there. Uh, I'm not doing this very well. I want this to be really thin. Okay. A Cosmos here. Thanks for joining us, Cosmo. Okay, sorry I had to kind of dither around there a bit. So your glasses really look more like this, okay? If you're nearsighted. If you wear glasses, and I know some of you do, what you may wanna do, thank you, Benedict. Good morning. What you may wanna do if you wear glasses is take them off right now and see if they're thicker or thinner in the middle. And if they're thinner in the middle, you're nearsighted and you've got a diverging lens, okay? So if you're thicker in the middle, then you've got a converging lens. So just to be clear, so if you're nearsighted, we got, this is a diverging lens. And for a farsighted eye, it's a converging lens. Okay, good. Thanks for joining me, everybody. And uh, I think we're about done with classes. And I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but yeah, I think, I mean, I used to wear glasses and that's, uh, that's sort of the deal. If you do wear glasses or contact lenses, you might want to know something interesting about the power of your lenses. The power of eyeglasses is in what's called diopters. And there's an equation, just like everything in physics. I'll tilt the board in a second. And so to get the power in your of your glasses, it's one over the focal length. So now to think about it, these diverging lenses, these guys had a negative, these guys had a negative focal length. And the converging ones, that had a positive focal length. You might remember that from a couple of weeks ago. 
So if I'm nearsighted, a nearsighted prescription for lenses or for contact lenses, and I'll get to your questions in just a moment. Prescription could be negative 2.6, we'll say, diopters. If your parents have reading glasses, they're probably more like positive one or positive one and a half. That would be in the diopters for reading glasses, right? Because that means they're farsighted. Not cool. Now, let me tell you, my eyes, I've had an operation on my eyes. It's called LASIK surgery. But before I was really nearsighted, my prescription was negative 5.5 diopters. I was really nearsighted, very much extremely. Oh, and I got a couple joining us. Okay, let me read your comments. And I'll also write that Tom is here. Welcome, Tom. See if I missed anybody else while I was yakking. Okay, Santiago's comment, if you put two diverging lenses together next to each other, what kind of image do they create? Still a virtual image, um, Santiago. Leah, uh, how do you add the prescription? How do you add the prescription in the glasses? It always a different type of lens. Exactly, so that's how they get the, they have to grind the lenses to make the glass lenses the exact right shape to get the right focal length, right, to get the right power in diopters. Now you know kind of how that works. I'll turn that little so you guys can see. Lena, how did you get laser surgery or how did it go away? I'll tell you in a, in a little bit what they did to me. Um, Righto. Okay, are you going to do a Google forum? Google forums quiz on this stuff we learn on the live streams. Good question. Uh, I'll ask if I'm going to do a quiz on this. And the answer is going to be no. What I'm going to do is I'll do another assignment or two before the end of the year, and I'm just going to have you answer some questions. But I'm not going to mess around with any sort of online quiz, okay? It'll just be some assignments that you can do to think about stuff at home. And to be honest, what we're probably doing, Ali and everybody, is we're finishing up optics for the most part today. The rest of the year, we're going to work on radiation, okay, nuclear radiation. We'll start that. Those of you that I have in 9E, I have you tomorrow for actual teaching. Hooray, I get to see you. And I hope to have 9F at some point as well. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do radiation the rest of the school year, okay? So hopefully have you ready for next year. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Shopa writes, nearsighted is negative and farsighted is always positive. Oh, let me get that right. Okay, so nearsighted. Yes, good. So nearsighted, Shilpa, the prescription is always a negative amount of diopters. And if I'm farsighted, so I need reading glasses, it's always a positive uh, amount of diopters. So for example, yeah, reading glasses would be positive diopters. If you have parents who have reading glasses, look at them, they're gonna be converging lenses, okay? Oh, and folks, if you have parents with uh, reading glasses, take them and you can do that trick and find the focal length just by focusing it from an image far away on the wall like we did and see if you can have some fun with them and try and find the focal length of your, uh, of your parents' lenses, okay? Good, right, okay. <sighs> Any other questions? I'll try and tip that so it's somewhat visible. Any other questions about eyeglasses? Contact lenses work the same way, except they're made of plastic. But I think they're a similar shape. Any other eye questions? We're not done with the eye, but I do need to change whiteboards. A diopter, I don't know where the word comes from, Santiago, but it's the, the label used for power of your glasses. Like I said, when I was still very nearsighted, my 
prescription was negative uh, 5.5 diopters or negative six and one eye diopters. I don't know where they got the word. You'll have to Google and find out. Okay, I'm gonna raise our other board and get this ready to go. And I'll look and see if you guys got any other questions as I'm doing that. We're doing pretty good. Getting through lenses and eyes. Your eyes are so important. Okay, so. Let's talk about some eye problems. I hope you don't have these, but some of you may just by luck. Okay, so eye problems. There really one is called cataract. 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 And in German, it's Graue Star. <clears throat> it's something your parents or grandparents may have had or may still have. <clears throat> so if they have cataracts, who knows what that is? Tell me what cataracts are. What happens to the lens if you have cataracts? <clears throat> cataracts, what happens to the lens? Yeah, good, Tom, it gets cloudy or blurry. Yes, she'll put clouds up. So lens, clouds up. And in the old days, Santiago, people would go blind. Once your lens clouded up, you were blind. It's just the way it is. Nowadays, we can fix this. Um, so the cure is surgery. I may put this on our class chat. There's a great video. Um, a number of videos where you can watch lens replacement to replace a lens or both lenses if both eyes are uh, have cataracts. When my father first had this operation in the 1970s, it was a lot of slow healing, a couple of weeks. Now you can get it done as outpatient surgery, okay? It's really, really quick. And it also helps if you have bad vision and they put in a new lens, they can actually cure your vision problem, your near or farsightedness at the same moment as I understand it. So uh, they use lasers, they cut out the old, they cut holes in your cornea, they suck out the old lens to be really honest, and then they put in very carefully a new one, spread it out, and it heals up very quickly. Your eye heals fairly quickly, which is cool. Good, I'm reading some comments now. Eye transplants exist. Yes, Ali, they do. You can have eyes and also lenses and parts, I think, transplanted from one person to another. Uh, I think that's possible. Isn't too much sunlight to be caused to cataracts? You know, I don't know, Shilpa, if sunlight causes cataracts or not. I know sunlight is another problem, okay? If I look right at the sun, what happens is the light is so extreme, it can burn a hole in my retina. Or if nothing else, it will destroy the cones at the back of the retina. So don't stare at the sun. That's why, because it hurts your, it hurts as far as I know, your retina quite a bit. What would the eye be made of if it was replaced? Okay, the lens, the uh, lens that they put in is made of a special type of plastic. And they've gotten better and better, so they're pretty much good for a lifetime, okay? Huge. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about, let's make sure I got your questions answered first. Let's talk about um, a detached retina. A 
Okay. Earlier this hour, you guys told me the retina is the back of the eye, right? Where the image focuses. Retina is pretty, pretty important little layer. It's a very important little material. Detached means parts of the retina become unattached to the back of your eye. So part or parts of retina come loose. So literally, if this is the retina, it could start to look like this. It could go like that, and then maybe a little bit would come off, and I've got either a tear or loose spot. If this ever happens to any of you, and it probably will by luck, it's happened to my sister and my brother uh, during their lives, you'll notice black in spots of your vision. You're like, why is that black there? If this happens, you need to go to an eye doctor fast. Do not wait around a few days, go immediately. Because if you don't, the rest of the, of the retina can pull off and you may have permanent uh, damage to your eye or even permanent blindness, okay? It's not always the case, but one way this could be caused is by accidents. Let's say you fall down skiing or have a traffic accident with a car or a bike accident. So accidents can cause this. And it may not be right away, okay? You might have an accident, maybe in your family car, some terrible traffic accident, and maybe you're only kind of, your head goes back, maybe a few months later, you notice that this has happened. So it could be caused, and then you notice it at a later time, all right? So just be aware. It's not the end of the world, but if you notice it, boy, get to an eye doctor very quick with a detached retina, okay? And what they do is cool, okay? They shine a laser through, and it's almost like they're taking a nail gun and boop, 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 and attaching the retina back to the eye. They sew it with a laser, as it were, back to the eye, which is pretty cool. So that's what they do to fix it. They essentially reattach it to the eye in all the spots where the retina has come loose. Neat. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about yeah, we're doing okay. In terms of the eye, oh yeah, is the cornea. Okay, so the cornea is the front, right? So I'm looking through the cornea before any of the light gets back into my eye. Over time, your cornea gets scratched up just naturally, okay? So if you, um, well, okay, you guys are a lot younger than I. Here, I'm going I'm to make a little board space here because I want to write something, okay? I think we got cataract down. So I'll write, over time, over time, your cornea gets scratched. Okay, it's like a windshield, right? And over time, it just gets scratched up. Well, what happens is it's not a big deal, but it does change how you see things. So, for example, when you guys look up and see a star at night, you see this. When I look up a star, and we'll say like me, an older person, Not too ancient, but already I'm seeing this. I see this. Every star looks like it's a cross. And that's what happens because of lots and lots of scratches on my cornea. It just happens to everybody over time. If you live in a country with a lot of sand, 
And I mean, literally a lot of sand like Saudi Arabia, it happens when you're younger because there's more sand that hits the cornea of the eye, okay? So over time, the scratches in the cornea make dots of light appear to be more like crosses, okay? That's the way I see it. Even headlights and stuff from oncoming cars. Okay, let's see some of your questions. I'll make sure I answer them. Can it also be immediate, the detached retina, I think uh, Santiago's referring to? Um, yes, I think you could get a detached retina right away in a bad accident, yes. And then Felina asked, can your cornea get scratched by rubbing your eyes? Yeah. So if I rub my eyes a lot, then, of course, you'll have more scratching of the cornea just from your fingers, from stuff that's in your eye. So it's better to actually just in the morning wash your eyes out a little bit so you don't have to scratch them all day long, okay, if they're itchy. That's not really very good for your eyes. Now you know why. It scratches your cornea, right? It's like your windshield. Can you fix the scratches? Not to my knowledge, Shilpa. <laughs> I wish you could because I'd rather see I'd rather see that instead of that. But I don't know of any way they can fix the scratches on your cornea. Maybe there's a cornea transplant, but I've not heard of it. Okay, and even so, it might be too expensive for me anyway. Yeah, good. Any other eye questions coming from your side? I'm going to take a brief glance at my notes and see if I've covered everything I wanted to with you. <clears throat> I believe I have. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> Any other questions? Um, ooh, yeah, I got some questions. Okay, so Magdalena, can you prevent that? Not really, Magdalena, as far as I know. <clears throat> part of it is just aging, and you get a car, and it gets older, the windshield gets scratched up a bit. That's the problem. All our cars are going to get older. At least we hope so. Um, Lee might have asked the same thing. Let's see. Here's Leah. If you spend too much time on electronic devices, does this also harm your lens, your retina? Yeah, it's a good question. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's say I'm looking at my handy. And I'm looking at it for hours. Apparently what this does, Leah, and everybody, is it makes your eyes, the muscles that change the lens weaker. So this is going to sound funny, but even if you like to play video games and stuff all the time, what you want to do is not stare at the screen or the handy for hours on end. You want to occasionally, and I don't mean every few hours, I mean every couple of minutes, look up and focus on something far away, okay, like a distant tree or a distant house or something far away out the window, and then look back. Do that occasionally. In your future jobs, if you're working on a computer, do the same thing. Because what they found is if you don't, your muscles get weaker and that tends to cause long-term difficulties, maybe more near or farsightedness, okay? So is there something you can do? Yeah, you can look at devices uh, less often, or if you're gonna look at them, look up so you exercise those muscles in your eye that change the lens, okay? Sounds funny, but it's a muscle like anything else, right? If you don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So more likely, not, uh, I lay not the muscle, not the, not the lens, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the muscles. The muscles uh, get lazy. The muscles get lazy, essentially. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. Thanks, Lee. Mm -hmm. And Felina. How do blue light glasses help your eyes? Blue light glasses. Felina, look it up and send me an email. I have no idea what that is. It's a new one on me. Santiago writes, what's the maximum time recommended to stare at a screen at a time? What do you know? No, I don't know. Uh, I would say Google it and find out, Santiago. Find a good medical site where doctors have done some research and see what they say. How often should you be looking up if you have to work at a screen, at a computer, if, you're, uh, if that's your work all day? Does this apply to reading a book or magazine as well? Yes, Emily, it does. 
So if I'm reading a long time, I also, it's better if I occasionally look up and refocus to use that muscle to change the shape of your lens occasionally, okay? Again, I don't have time for that, uh, time scale for that, as Santiago asked about. Okay, we're going to wrap that up. And thank you so much for great participation as usual. I'll see 9E tomorrow. 9F, be good. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye, everybody.